Now, something you might be asked to do is to calculate the specific charge of some kind of particle. Now, the word specific has a very specific meaning in physics, and it means per unit mass. So another example of this might be something like specific heat capacity, which is the amount of energy needed per unit mass. Now, there's, uh, the way we can work this out is basically looking at the charge on the particle divided by the mass. So sometimes we use Q for charge. Sometimes if we're thinking about maybe things like protons and electrons and things which have a charge of plus one or minus one, we then maybe use the elementary charge, which has the symbol E. So for example, uh, if you had something like an electron, uh, to work out the specific charge on an electron, uh, you can basically look at its charge, which is E, divided by the rest mass of the electron. These two things are often given to you in your data book. Um, so in this case, the charge is equal to minus 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. The mass is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. So I'm sure you're going to be familiar with these equations pretty soon. And if you do the working out, you find that it's got a value of minus 1.76 times 10 to the 11. And the units, because it's uh, charged to mass, are going to be coulombs per kilogram. So that's our smallest particle, uh, the electron. This is actually something you can measure in the school lab, and it's a, a, a practical that you can do in year 13, using things like a deflection tube to actually look at this stream of cathode rays and actually work out their charge to mass ratio. Another common example is a proton. So again, to work out uh, the mass, or the charge to mass ratio of this, you look at the elementary charge and the mass of the proton, like so. And in this case, it's equal to 9.56 times 10 to the 7 coulombs per kilogram. So although these two things have the same charge, uh, this one here has a lot less mass, so that the charge to mass ratio is a lot higher. Sometimes though you do get a question where it's maybe asking you to look at a whole nucleus. So for example, if you had a gold atom, you stripped off all the electrons and you just had what was left, the nucleus, uh, how would you find out the charge ratio of that? Well, first of all, you can do a bit of research using a periodic table. And we find that gold has a number 79 and 197. What this means is that there are 79 protons in the middle, plus there are also um, another uh, total number of neutrons, which give a total of 197 uh, nucleons in the middle. So 197 minus 79 is equal to 118. To work out the charge to mass ratio, uh, the charge is going to be equal to 79 times the number of protons, which is one point, uh, it's basically all of this. Um, and then you want to look at the total mass, and the total mass is going to be equal to the mass of all the protons, which is 79 times 1.673 uh, times 10 to the minus 27, added to the total number of neutrons, 118. But this time, the mass of a neutron is slightly different to the mass of a proton, especially when we're working to four significant figures. So this is 1.675 uh, times 10 to the minus 27. You can work this out on your calculator. I've already done it. In natural fact, the charge to mass ratio of a gold nucleus uh, is about 3.83 times 10 to the 7 coulombs per kilogram. So a lot less than just the proton, but that's because you've got a load of neutrons in there as well, which sort of dilute this kind of charge. So that's pretty much it. You never need to know this in later life. Since I did my A-levels, I've never had to do this ever. But you know, you're at that stage in life where you need to know about this. This is how to measure the specific charge on a particle.